I think that we're now switching back to uh, Skype uh, to, uh, to our uh, live feed with uh, Hugo Williams. Hugo, can you hear me? Oh, brilliant. Thanks very much. Where are you coming in from for today? Uh, I'm coming in from Camberwell. Camberwell in London. Wonderful. Thanks very much for coming in on TechFugees Live. Hugo Williams, um, uh, let's, let's open up with um, a little, uh, just uh, 30 seconds on what project you're working on. Well, what I would like to present today to the TechFugees community is um, a working principle uh, and the germ of an idea, uh, which is about uh, improving the flow of information for those uh, involved in the refugee crisis. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's just, before you uh, uh, go into it, just, uh, what's your day job, Hugo? So my day job is uh, I'm a BBC journalist um, and uh, I've been working for the BBC for five years, um, first at the World Service Radio um, and then now for the website. Um, my kind of, my relevance, I suppose, to, to your day of talks today um, is that in November I spent two weeks uh, volunteering with media NGO Internews. Um, and I established a program uh, working with a small team to create audio information announcements um, for different transit points on the island, Lesbos being the island where the majority of refugees uh, arrive into Europe, into the EU. Um, and what we did was to, to establish uh, what are the key bits of information that, <coughs> excuse me, the key bits of information that people arriving on the island need, uh, clearly of, often uh, having undergone traumatic uh, journeys uh, yeah. and uh, fairly kind of in, in, in precarious situations a lot of the time, what are the absolute key bits of info they need to be safe and to be able to continue their onward journey successfully? So, um, so Hugo, just um, describe to us briefly what the app is all about then. Well, as I say, this at the moment... You would expect me to say, um, here's the URL for the incredible app that I've developed. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, but what, I'm gonna, what I would say is uh, the project which I did on Lesbos, whereby we showed that in the space of two weeks, you could create um, high-quality information that was targeted to people in specific locations, is something that I'm very uh, interested in expanding out. So... To give you an idea, um, I think there is a problem with uh, the current information flow uh, for refugees uh, caught up in the crisis. I say that because um, what you have is uh, uh, international NGOs, uh, volunteers, everyone working together, but it takes quite a long time um, for things to get done. So. I spent three days driving around the island of Lesbos with a Syrian colleague um, and we sort of did interviews uh, with refugee families, we spoke to volunteers, uh, we spoke to NGOs and it, it took three days for us to get a clear picture of what you had to do at different points of the island when you arrived there as a refugee. And we had sort of, we had a car, we had, I had an Arabic translator uh, and colleague, and uh, we had all the resources which people who, getting off a boat after a, a sort of terrible journey, don't have. So it's a very complicated, there's, there's complicated information that needs to be handed on. And I think <coughs> what, I, what I'd like to propose um, is a sort of rallying call for us to improve that information flow to create a uh, hyper-local uh, a hyper -local, uh, information system, uh, which, means that, which would mean that everyone along the route uh, would have the opportunity to get information that was targeted to them. Um, so um, what's, what, you're talking about a mobile web app, aren't you, I think, Hugo? Hugo. Well, I think, my, so the important thing, Mike, is that I, what I'd like to do is... Um, to focus initially on the concept, which is that we need good, high-quality information to bring some of the principles of high-quality news journalism, such as accuracy, something being concise, and something being timely, 
and to bring those to bear on how we get information. Once, once you've created that information flow, however we manage to do it, then you can worry about, we're going to put it out on WhatsApp, we're going to do SMS blasts, mm. we're going to share it with Facebook groups. So what I want to do is say, here, you know, I have a set of skills which is in uh, breaking news, uh, cur curation, social media, and advanced social media, um, and, and communication flows. And I want to sort of create a rallying call for people to come together. We need sort of translators. We need people who understand technology sort of better than I do to say, well, look, if you want to, um, if you want to create a system where sort of people can submit information at different points of the route and then it can be upvoted, for example, according to its reliability, then we could do that. And, and the whole sort of premise for this is that I've, worked, I, I've sort of done it the lo-fi way and I've done it the, um, the traditional way. And when you're working with an organization, be it an NGO or a government, you have to, um, you have to stick to the rules uh, in the sense that you know, the UN cannot afford to give any information that is wrong. The BBC cannot afford to give any information that is wrong. But what happens in scenarios like this is that people end up not having any information at all for four weeks because right. of the risk yeah. that it might not be the right information. So and what, what I'm I, saying is let's, yeah. let's create a sort of uh, a, a self a self-generating, self-editing <laughs> system, like a sort of Wikipedia for the migrant route, where somehow we can, we can give people the high quality information that they need to make their journeys and it's going to be updated. So you've got the Google back project called refugeeinfo.eu, which is a, a great idea. The problem is it's, it's a bit like throwing an encyclopedia at someone as they've just got off the boat and saying, here you go, read that. That's, that's all the information you need. It's, we have to apply the, the best principles of journalism, which is that you make, some, you, you make the issue clear, you, make, you, you, you kind of re are really concise about it. So let's say you'd have you know, the three most important things happening within your 50 mile radius of your journey today, and then people would be able to vote on whether that, that information is accurate, rather than waiting for the UN to say, yes, this information is accurate, or someone in London to verify it, whether there is a possibility. Uh, so, of so creating what, that system. So what, what you seem to be saying uh, here, Hugo, or proposing here is that is that is that uh, an app or a, a website or a news organisation, uh, almost uh, like a semi news organisation, like the one you're proposing, can take that risk on the information it's providing to the refugees, whereas, as you say, a government or a a, a big official news organisation cannot take that risk. You're saying let's crowdsource it, let's turn it into a into something where the information is updated all the time by people on the ground and it's location based. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that, that, that's, the, that's the kind of general principle of it, yeah. And, and I think the thing to, I was listening to one of your earlier guests from the UN uh, Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, I think it is. Um, and she was, you know, you said to her, so what kind of innovative things are going on, you know, how, how, do, how do people push those through and make sure they happen, can, can they kind of come to you? And although enthusiastic, I think her response is basically things take a very long time in the world of NGOs and official humanitarian relief because we are accountable to donors. And what I'm saying is, would it not be better uh, it, it, in, in a situation like this, let's take Lesbos, um, would it be better to have a lot of information that is um, accurate most of the time or very little or no information that is always accurate? And I think there's a different principle that, that needs to be brought to bear on the refugee crisis as opposed to BBC News or a leaflet from the UN because this information is out there. It's just about creating that loop where we can sort of feed uh, all the all the pe all the stakeholders and people I can't believe I use the word stakeholders apologies um, all the people who have the information refugees be they refugees volunteers uh, NGOs and feed that into a loop so that it can sort of self refresh self edit like a sort of uh, a refugee wiki. Um, actually, let me just uh, pick you up, uh, Hugo. Uh, do you, are you aware of the Refugee Aid app? 
which has uh, been yes. circulating? Yes, I am. Um, so I think what the the kind of the key premise of all this is, I do I, I think that there is uh, there are a lot of good steps being taken, a lot of good um, ideas that have that have been implemented. Um, but I think there's room for sort of that, like bringing that sort of slightly journalistic rigor to to the information uh, sphere of of the refugee crisis and saying, actually, that's great information. Let's put that through a strainer and get out the stuff we really need so that it's it's not like you're handing someone a Times crossword at the end of the finishing line of the London Marathon and expecting them to solve it, even if they might be very clever, because they're not necessarily in a position to decode it all. So let's make it, let's get high quality information that is concise, that is accurate and fundamentally that can be updated far quicker than all the different initiatives that are going on at the moment. Um, and let's work out a way of getting that together. So sounds sounds rather vague. Um, and uh, I apologize, I don't have an app to present to you. But uh, if anyone uh, thinks that uh, agrees with me on the sort of primacy of high quality uh, information in this context, uh, do get in touch. Uh, I'm looking to work with translators, people who understand more how you could uh, set up this kind of this kind of loop, uh, the self-regulating communication loop. That that. So um, here you go, here you go. Um, uh, finally, how can people reach you uh, to in, to help you build this app? Uh, well, I will. I'm on Hugo T Williams. That's T for Thomas uh, on Twitter. Uh, my email, it should be... Oh, will you guys be sharing the emails? Of, yep, we're uh, going to yeah. tweet, tweet out your Twitter handle right now on the TechBG's channel. Uh, and uh, Hugo T. Williams, right? And uh, to get in contact with you. So, yeah. um, and as you say, what we're talking about here is a sort of like a mini, a mini BBC that uh, parachutes in and starts to, uh, as it were, curate all the information, the breaking news information on a location-based manner for those refugees. And I think, Hugo, you've made an incredibly good point today, which is you're, you don't want to throw an encyclopedia at a refugee as soon as they land on Lesbos or, or whatever it is. But for now, thank you very much, Hugo, for coming in to us on our Skype call for uh, Tech4G's Live. Thank you very much, Hugo Williams. And uh, thanks, Mike. thanks. Speak, speak again. <laughs>